Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Minia True and welcome back to Stellaris Apocalypse, where in this brand new universe I've chosen to play in, things have gone well. It's been a bit of an exciting start. We have managed to spawn literally right next to, hang on, our starting system is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, 10, actually, maybe we can go faster if we go this way. If we go like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, yeah. Eight jumps. Eight jumps from a fanatical purifier's homeworld. <laughs> Which is pretty much as bad as it gets. Actually, you know what? No, it's not. You could get stuck right next to some bloody xenophobic foreign empires. But then, in all fairness, they basically stay quiet for quite a bit of the game, so it wouldn't be a big problem. This is a big problem, however. So we're kind of barricading up the entrances into our empire as well as we can, but... We probably need to start investing in a fleet at some point, because we don't really have one anymore. And the fleet we did have just kind of got half destroyed by pirates. So, yeah, probably time to spend some money on that. And here comes some technology. Good technology. Oh, Unity plus five. Marvellous. That is just what I wanted to see. And sadly, society is the one thing that's not going to give me new weapons to potentially fight against these bastards, because I need weapons, damn it. But, Empire leader capacity and Empire pool size. Yeah. That's worth taking fe- Oh, that's expensive, mind. Uh, when I say that's expensive, apparently everything's a bit on the expensive side for the time being. Fine. Yeah, do that. It's pretty nice to have the leader pool size up a little bit. Now, the one thing I should be spending money on that's not the fleet right now is mining stations. Let's just get a couple of mining stations down here. Maybe one more up here. But after that, every single bit of mineral that actually comes in ought to be going into either reinforcing the actual star bases in this part of the world with defensive platforms. I think they've both got... Yeah, we've got one defensive platform down here representing fleet power of 219. And one down here for another 219. So, right now, these defensive platforms represent like about three times as much strength as I've actually got in my fleet, which is... Right, we found the pirates. We found the pirates. The problem is, we're not actually strong enough to kill them. <laughs> this is marvellous. This is just absolutely great. Right, remember those guys are there. We'll take them out later. Hopefully they don't spawn more pirates, otherwise that could be a problem. Also, here's a fun thing, by the way. Oh, hello, we've got... Oh, it's an artisan troop. Lovely. I like those guys, but unfortunately... Where were you guys? Were you guys the ones... Possibly this was the artisan troop up here? Hang on, do we know which was which here? Do we know who you are? You are Curator Lambda. Then there was another one down here. Are you the... No, you're also these guys. Interesting. I don't know why exactly you guys have contacted me, but it's nice that you exist. Please don't get blown up by like a passing leviathan. Also, traditions are available. Marvellous. Now. Now, 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 now. At this point, under normal circumstances, I would probably go for either harmony or prosperity. Because prosperity is very, very good, and shipyard build cost and building cost reduced by 15% is really nice. Supremacy would be a nice to have too, but to be honest, yeah, that's... Hmm, starbase upgrade cost down 20% is nice. That leads into shipyard build speed and ship upgrade cost reduced by 20% and 25%. That's good as well. And then after we deal with right of conquest, we could take war games for fleet command limit up by 20. So an individual fleet could hold up to 40. Though there's loads of technology that does that, by the way. There's no shortage of tech there. And fire rate increased by 10%. That's nice. That's very, very nice indeed. Harmony I like taking just because pop growth speed increased by 25% is really damn good and it leads into mind and body and leader lifespan up by 20 years is really really damn good as well. Plus for me as I'm going for kind of a unity build right now the paradise dome would be really nice to get into the empire but probably the best offense is a good economy. Prosperity strikes me as a very good idea here yes. What's the actual adoption effect here? Starbase upgrade down by 20% would be nice. That'd be nice, but... I mean, I've already got five star bases, so I don't need the additional two there. Yeah, by the way, you'll be swimming in star bases. Don't be afraid to just throw them down. Like, it's very easy to get up to, like, 11 in the early mid-game. That's not a problem at all. I'm going to see if I can rush Prosperity. Because Prosperity's actually got a bit better, by the way. Um, The whole private colony ship, that's gone. That's now tied to a Civic of some description. Instead, now the thing that's before the um, Energy Grid and Energy Nexus producing two unity is just energy output increased 5% across the board, and trading hubs produce one additional energy. Uh, trading hubs are one of the buildings attached to your um, your star bases. They're basically just solar panels, as far as I can tell. Uh, so yeah, that's actually pretty good. I'm going to adopt Prosperity, and hopefully that'll help us out a little bit. 
So, my fleet is returning to Lux for repairs, and as it's on the way, I can actually hit the actual reinforce button for the first time. Because, yes indeed, I've already told the game what this fleet ought to look like. It ought to look like just 20 Corvettes, because I can't train anything else right now. So if I just hit the reinforce button, Lux Station just starts automatically training a Corvette. If I had more technology and say it was supposed to contain... I don't know, uh, 20 Corvettes and 5 Destroyers. If 2 Destroyers had actually been destroyed but the Corvettes were all fine, then basically what I could say would be reinforce and it would attempt to build the 2 Destroyers and then automatically also move them into the fleet, which is very, very good indeed. These guys are now expanding in this direction. Okay, I just need to stay one step ahead of them. Complete. The problem is, if they start coming round here and start going north... Hmm... I don't really want to be spending my minerals also locking down Kathia, though Kathia does have five minerals, which is quite good. Um, do I want to just be building ships at this point? Do I want ships or do I want to invest in more minerals so I can buy more ships? Cabbage Defense Fleet is back up to full strength, is indeed two ships. Full strength representing two. Marvellous. But about to be three, thanks to that reinforce button. So the ship basically gets spawned and immediately auto merges into this fleet right here, which is lovely, up to 119. And apparently also there's some upgrades I can do. Upgrade two ships for 10. I will do ships that. Marvellous. The fleet has been upgraded. I think that was some form of technology change I made over just to make the ships just ever so slightly more efficient. And yeah, just hit that reinforce button again and more ships start being spawned. Very, very useful indeed. Can't help but notice there's a lot of good desert worlds around here. That's an okay desert world. That's an arid world, but sort of okay. That's a good desert world right there. Ah, they've actually finally got a second world down as well. I probably don't have visibility of it properly. No, but they are colonizing it. I remember that was a good world as well, and they're calling it Moss Lands. Marvellous. So, they've got their second world going down. I've already got my second world down. In fact, it's growing pretty fast at the minute. It's going... Yeah, that's going pretty well. It's producing a good amount of, for the moment at least, just actually food, unity. In fact, pretty much just food and unity. And one energy. <laughs> one energy, yay. Uh, so it's not even paying for itself energy-wise. So we probably need to sort that out at some point too. But the unity is useful. Plus 24. That's not bad for 2215. I'm just going to move one of my construction ships up here, by the way, because if these guys keep expanding in this direction, I want to make sure I do have the opportunity to lock down Aldeb. Because, yeah, 10 minerals. 10 minerals. Oh. Can't help but notice this is a lot of asteroids in an asteroid belt. Now, there is a stupid trap system where you get basically attacked by a bunch of monsters if you try and take a bunch of really valuable crystal-filled rocks. But I think that's worth more than that. So I think we're okay for the time being. I think this is safe. Ah, assist research is done as well. Marvellous. Oh. Research speed plus 5%. Yeah, take that immediately. Lovely. So, the Cabbage Defense Fleet is now actually moving back to its position where it should be right on our borders. And now we just keep hitting that reinforced fleet button and more and more ships will actually spawn in. You'll probably notice, by the way, that there is actually a fleet here, Classis 1, that is not listed over here. Yeah, reinforcing fleets where a fleet basically exists and is just traveling by itself to merge with your fleet does not actually show up in the military fleets tab anymore, which is very, very useful. <laughs> Because, yeah, my experience with Solaris is when you were trying to reinforce as fast as you could, you would end up with, like, you know, your main fleet and then 27 fleets with just one ship in who are basically just, you know, on the way to reinforce you. So it's kind of good those don't show up anymore. You might be able to set them to show up. I'm genuinely not sure. Also, here's something cool in this part of the galaxy. So down here, you've got yourself a massive long line. <laughs> not sure who's going to end up taking that, but they'll probably take what looks like a very impressively large amount of territory for not much effort. Meanwhile, anyone who takes this system can basically have all of these for free as well, which is nice, yeah. It's nice being- oh! Pirate fleet- oh, flip! So, as it turns out, that pirate station is indeed just continuing to spawn more ships. Okay, this is lovely, and also they're getting stronger. This is- this is mildly concerning. Mildly concerning that this is now happening. Um... Right, you just head on your way, let the station do most of the work, because that fleet's I'd actually been beaten by pirates. This is very embarrassing. Right, now before I engage, keep an eye on these guys, because they are taking some light damage from the ship, but not much, to be honest. 
Ah, here's what I want to see. With a bit of research done, I finally actually get some new weapons. Yeah, just go for improved coil guns, that's fine. Afterburners would be nice, because that does boost sublight speed, which is lovely. And evasion too, but... I need some more powerful weapons, damn it. Seriously, I've been unlucky with the weapon draw so far. You see, the nice thing about this starport is, while its shields and armor may go down fairly quickly, it does have a lot of health. So we can basically just keep pelting these guys with missiles for quite some time. Now, however, that it's starting to get a little bit on the low side, time for me to deploy my own fleet, which admittedly only has four ships and probably inferior ships. I'm having my ass handed to me by pirates, it's beautiful. So, get over here, engage these guys, fire, 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 everything is beautiful and lovely. We'll hopefully take their shields down. Yeah, their shields are going down in a hurry because I've got coil guns and I've also got some lasers. So once we actually get past their shields, my lasers can start doing some good work. Also, I've got a new contact. Why does that always happen? Every time I do a battle, someone decides to interrupt it. Hello, who are you? You're... Hmm. I'm not sure about you. You're fanatical authoritarian, which isn't good, but you're spiritualist, which is good. So we could probably learn something from each other, Mr. Rhino Tortoise thing. Right, hang on, where are you actually based? You're down here and you look... are you bigger than me? No, actually, I think you've just managed to kind of spread across some fairly wide systems. Uh, who are you exactly? You are... You are based in a nice, what looks like, yeah, tropical environment, so me and you get on in that regard. They have managed to... Yeah, they also potentially want to be involved against the bastard fanatical purifiers. Lovely. They're happy with us for now. They don't have the egalitarianism, but with mutual rivals, wise spiritualists and xenophile diplomacy, me and them can get on just fine. And these two guys don't hate each other, because for the moment at least, they don't actually have what's technically a border, because there's no system that links them. They're not really competing for anything. So... If these guys just build up a bit, we could do a great big three-way smash down into the fanatical purifiers, and that would just be lovely. Assuming I can ever actually defeat the menace of bloody pirates. Because I'm kind of hoping on this occasion that maybe my guys, when they start taking some damage, will decide to- Oh dear, I went in a bit late. My station has unfortunately been deactivated and is no longer actually spitting out uh, missiles. That means we need to win this one, you know, by myself. A non-aggression pact invitation. Apparently I auto-declined that. Fine. One of my ships just pulled out there, by the way. So yeah, that is indeed ships deciding to pull out. Any chance my station's going to decide it wants to turn back on again after a while? Anytime it's ready. Anytime. How are my other ships doing? Another ship decides to warp out. We're going to lose against the pirates a second time. This is just embarrassing, quite frankly. Do I have another ship coming in? I swear I've got reinforcements. Yeah, there's reinforcements. Oh, marvellous. Uh, we are down to two ships. If we could just take out, like, one of their ships, and this thing would like to wake up... Yeah, it will start repairing itself in 30 days. Uh, when did it stop repairing itself? I'm not sure. These ships are okay for the time being. We might actually, with the assistance of this new ship, just be able to win this, and we won't actually have lost a ship. Because, hang on, yeah, you're both actually out of armour at this point, but... This guy's almost dead. Yeah, just fire on this guy, and then everybody just basically work on this. Yeah, there we are. Are you joining this fleet? Are you in the fleet at this point? Are you technically, you're technically your own fleet as far as this battle's concerned. Now everyone just concentrate fire on this bloody pirate. And I haven't lost a ship. You see, that's the nice thing. I haven't actually lost a ship on this occasion. Because my ships basically retreated rather than being destroyed. Hence that little symbol. They walked out successfully, and they've been destroyed. Lovely. And now, as a result, they immediately return. So, merge them together, and you'll see there, I've actually got myself all five ships back again, just a little bit on the battered side. Now, what does the debris contain? That contains... Ooh! The debris contains a whole bunch of useful stuff. Where are my science ships? Uh, probably off doing important things, like figuring out what lives where. Yeah, my science ships are miles... Ooh, hello! That's a good system. Right, okay. We definitely want to expand up here at some point. This will be a good direction to expand into. There is good mining to be had in this part of the world. Speaking of which, therefore, yeah, expand out to here. Secure this area, so if we see them secure this, we can immediately secure Aldib. I want to make sure we get Aldib. It's too valuable to lose. So, once again, my fleet now needs to pull straight back out again. <laughs> so more pirates will probably spawn in later, but hopefully next time we'll be ready for them.
And while my fleet is actually moving back towards Lux, I can just wait for money to roll in and... Hello? What's this? Ah, this must just be a planet I was just scanning as part of Anomaly. Toxic Wasteland. Our scans unveiled it has not always been so, and now extinct civilization seems to have destroyed its home planet via a heavy reliance on climate-altering fuels and toxins. On a remote hill close to a major city, we have found a lone active facility, a robot assembly plant, desolate and surrounded by military vehicles so deteriorated they break upon touch. The facility is alien and mysterious, but could provide us with ample study material, cautionary tale, engineering plus five. Ooh. Adds the Fallen Robotic Society modifier. Very, very cool indeed. And also gives us the Improved Energy Initiative Empire Edict. Okay, so we've picked up an actual new edict out of that. That's cool. Let's have a quick look see at that here. Improved Energy Initiative. Spend 190 influence in order for the next 11 years and 6 months. So I think it's being extended by my Spiritualism, if I recall correctly. I think the default is 10, but I'm getting a bit of a boost from Spiritualism. And it can be doubled up by the relevant sensei perk, which I think is a really good perk. Uh, so consumer good cost down 10%. Research speed for industry and materials up by 10%. That's okay, but I can't see myself spending 190 on that when there's so many better things to declare 190 on. Like, declare Saints the big one, to my mind, for, yeah, the next uh, 11 years and 6 months, monthly unity up by 15%. That's a good trade. And healthcare, 950 minerals for growth speed plus 20%. That's another really nice one, as you do often find yourself floating a big pile of energy. So, the Cabbage Defence Force is heading home to Lux for repairs, because that's the only shipyard I've got right now. And every time I get enough money to actually put another ship in there, I'm just hitting that reinforce button and everything is fine. Hang on, is that you wanting to... Yeah, non-aggression pact. I'm happy to non-aggression pact with the Xenophiles up north. No problem with that at all. I've got no interest in war with them. And, aha! As I suspected they might do, those guys have indeed uh, extended out to... Biltron, or is it Biltron? Yes, Biltron. So I want to make sure I get this system, please. So immediately move over there and lock that down. And just in case we ever have trouble with these guys, this will be our barrier against them. And then, yeah, if they try and block us out of this whole area by taking Talisus, they'll need to go boom, 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 boom. So we'll see that coming. But it's important to me I take Aldib, so I potentially have a gateway to this area up north. Okay, so the Cabbage Defense Force is now up to strength. Yes, you get on with that. That's now up to strength. What is that? 281. Head directly south and clear out that pirate base before it spawns more bloody pirates. I've had enough of bloody pirates for the time being. And alongside a beautiful Class A star, here comes the fully upgraded and repaired Cabbage Defense Force, ready to take out these bloody pirates, now strength 309. And this is how warfare often works, this is a good introduction to it. Very often, just because you lose a fight, it doesn't mean you lose everything. Back in the days of old Stellaris, that's kind of how it was. Basically, if you were to ever actually lose a fight, you'd pretty much just have lost everything. Your fleet would be dead. Sure, you could retreat out, but you'd have lost too much in the meantime. Like, you'd have lost easily the vast majority of your fleet. Not so much anymore. Also, there comes some more actual flipping stuff there. Lovely. Prosperity. What's the most important thing right now? Yeah, energy output up by 5%. That's got to be a good idea. Plus, that leads into energy nexus having a bonus unity, which is very, very useful indeed if I'm chasing unity. Instead, in 2.0, you'll very often find wars are effectively just skirmishers, because the vast majority of ships, unless you've specifically chosen, like, you know, general traits or whatever, that mean your ships don't retreat, many ships will get away. They'll fall back to friendly space, they'll hide behind star bases, they'll repair up. Sure, you'll actually still get some war exhaustion one way or the other. We'll explain war exhaustion when we actually get into a proper war. Uh, so, you know, there are still benefits to winning fights, but... Fleets aren't destroyed just because they lose. I think that's a good, good change. So, the pirate station has been raided. We've managed to get the strong room module. That just gives us a bit of money and energy, which is why it's worth going to hunt those guys down. Aside from the fact that they also, you know, just produce never-ending streams of bloody pirates. You head over here, join up to that. Now, with that little extra bit of money, let's just actually save up for a bit, because soon we'll be able to upgrade these here star bases. Though possibly... It's a more sensible idea just to basically invest in, yeah, reinforcing the fleet. And we have indeed successfully locked down Aldib up there. Absolutely flipping marvellous. Well done, lad. So, it's going to be a bit expensive to get all this mined up because this is going to be 90 apiece at the moment. But, when we do, that's a good increase to how many minerals we're making. 
and watch for these guys. If they start heading around Arcturus and all of that sort of area, we need to make sure we take Talisers so that we can get down here potentially and just make sure we can keep expanding. Perfect world. I wouldn't mind actually. Yeah, these are good planets. If I could just get someone... Hang on, were you hot or cold, my primitives who now live in my territory? You're hot, unfortunately. If I could find someone who likes cold weather, then... Yeah. Construction complete. This planet is good. This planet is good. And this planet, these guys uplifted because they're earthbound, could be very useful. Tabby's doing the science and the unity. The humans doing the mining and the farming. And these guys with earthbound, energy creates plus 10% doing the energy. Now that would be a good combo. And better and better, I've just checked the relative power of us and the cabbages. Our fleet power is now equivalent compared to theirs. That means that my fleet standing next to one of my star bases with an extra defense platform on it, we would be in good shape. The downside is right now, if I try and invite attackers, these guys aren't willing to actually join a war I would start. Because even though they like me, their forces are not sufficiently built up to do it. Research speed up by 5%, very, very useful indeed. And oh, give me some flipping weapons. I need weapons, damn it. Okay, fine, I'll take colony development speed because we've got three actual core systems we're not even utilizing yet, so we absolutely want those. He's expanding in this direction now. That's a little bit on the concerning side. Where are my construction ships? One of you's here. Oh, you've expanded over here. Right. He's cutting me off. In fact, he already has successfully cut me off. Because he's got to here. I now can't get to this space around here. I need to get around here. Block this off. Because this is quite valuable. So I'd like to have that. But at this point, I need to have some territory off him. I need to have, ideally, these two systems. Purely so that I can actually get access to the rest of the galaxy over this way. Because right now, he's literally blocked me off. Um, what else could we do here? Yeah, I could go round this way, the long way round, but that's very, very slow on 2.0. But yeah, we've got bigger problems to deal with over here as well. We need to start locking down some of this before he gets to it. Easiest way to do that will be to lock down, yeah, probably building a new construction ship here. Start sending it south. Lock down this planet because it's okay. I might actually want to settle that sooner rather than later. Try and lock down this system just to make sure he can't get up to here. And then we'll be okay. I don't know what's in this spot yet. I haven't even had a chance to scan that. I've been a bit busy. Yeah, okay, fine. Uh, didn't need to come in here. So, uh, repose. Starport that doesn't exist because the game says you still have a starport for civilian ships. But you clearly don't. But you just do. Because, <laughs> yeah, this is the star base where you've actually got the shipyard. This is the civilian base. Where's the actual starport where I'm training civilian ships from? I don't know. Maybe it's the far side. No, it's not. I can spin the camera around. It's not there. System yeah, I find in 2.0, you really want to be going over to uh, three construction ships and three science ships way earlier than I would do normally. Definitely wanted to be doing that. Oh, flip. My science ship is now trapped on the far side of their territory. I miss that. Balls. Well, you may as well stay on the far side of the territory now. Just basically stay over here and scan all this like it'll be useful to know about in the future. Okay, there's a real race developing over here on the west of the Empire. I've just managed to lock down Chiblar, but now I need to decide what I consider to be my highest priority. There's Baltrak over here, which has got itself... Yeah, that's got the Neutron Star, which is kind of cool with a sublight speed reduction minus 50%. That's got seven engineering in it. Alternatively, we can kind of hope these guys are going for here and not for this. I mean, ugh. I could go for here, but he might be going for that. But he might be going for that. These guys might be racing for that. Or he might be going for this and he might be going for this. And it doesn't matter. I'm going to lose one way or the other. The thing is, if I go over here, I'm basically opening up a new front that needs to be defended against the bastard cabbage destroyers. Um... This is intriguing. Okay. You head over here and you don't have the influence yet, but by the time you get there, you do. I'm going to lock down this because I want 7 engineering. Because 7 engineering would be really nice because that would actually significantly, massively speed up the coil gun. That would be very, very useful indeed. Okay, moment of truth. My little construction ship is about to warp over to that system. He is, yep, yeah, 7 days out from warping. If he gets here and he sees construction ship from those guys already present, then there's a good chance they're just going to get the system. 
And the answer is... No, it's a science ship. They're scanning this area, and it's actually not them. It's my friends, the Athari, down south. Yeah. Get this place locked down. I want to get hold of this here science, please. And after that point, I should probably prioritize just building a couple of research stations. Except I can't prioritize that. Because I need to prioritize locking down the rest of this. Though actually, once I've got this, I could completely ignore that and just try and take this if I still have the chance to. I'd like to take this if I could. Just because I'd rather have a single lane choke point with these guys, just in case it ever goes bad with them. Hopefully it won't. Hopefully they're not rushing for this. I mean, they've got so many directions they could expand into. These guys, I can see they've got limited options. They're a bit squeezed between people that hate them. But in all fairness, that is because they are fanatical purifiers. So they kind of brought that on themselves. Ah, time for a new revered elder. Now, <laughs> the human is obviously the favourite. Everybody loves the human. She did marvellously well. Okay, who else could we bring in here? Yeah, I really, really would like this guy to win, except I don't have the influence, and I can't spare the influence. I think the human's actually about to be re-elected cat pope, and there's nothing I can do about it. Yes, as I suspected, the xenophobes up north are indeed expanding out to Arcturus. If we see them reach... Hmm, should I try and run over to... No, I can't worry about that right now. If I see them reach here, that's when I get concerned. Hopefully, they'll be more interested in these two systems up here. New ruler mandate. And hang on, she's come to an end. Election promises... Wait, what election promises? Oh, the election promise was technically orbital mandate thing. The research thing. And... Ooh, we've got a tabby. Right, energy credits up 10%. Charismatic. That'll do, actually. Edict cost down and edict duration up. That's good. Okay, you get over here as fast as you can. I know you don't actually have the influence yet, but just get over there and try and lock it down if you can. And, oh, bloody hell. Right, you... There's not that much left on this side of the galaxy. You may as well, while you're passing by, just basically deal with these two systems. Admiral gains trait. Ooh, fleet logistics. Very useful. So he's got gale speed and fleet logistics. And you're not even that old yet. You're 46. You're only skill 1, admittedly, but that's pretty good. I'm happy with that, quite frankly. I'm very happy with gale speed and fleet logistics. Okay, the fanatical purifiers moved over here to Istrum. They took that. So if these guys want to expand north, there's literally only one way to go. Aside from, obviously, up here. Which I feel like they should go to because no one's fighting over that. <laughs> but we are really fighting over every bit of territory right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Get over there, fast as you flipping like, and looks like I'm the only person in here. Are you actually, wait, are you in here? Have you, have you arrived yet? Or are you still, no, you haven't got there yet. Sorry, I thought you'd already got there. Just hurry at the flip up. <laughs> yeah, the game pace is very slow in the early game. It will feel slow to you, but I like it. I think once you get used to it, it's very, very good indeed. And someone also communicated with me. Oh, right. So, apparently, we have got not too far from us the ancient caretakers. Right, so... Oh, dear. That's that's worrying, because they look like giant wasps. They do appear to be giant robot wasps, which is not a good sign. Not a good sign at all. But you know what? I'm glad they're here, because the ancient caretakers are kind of fun. They give you a lot of wacky missions that are really kind of weird. So I'm glad they'll be around to actually, you know, give us missions. So, greeting organic sapiens. You're approaching the Omni Continuum Territory. The system serves refuge for sapient organics against the data block corrupted threat. For refugee status applications, proceed to central processing. All sapient organic species are welcomed on the basis of availability and need. Okay, and obviously we don't want to attack them. They will absolutely cocking murder us because these guys are the fifth non-paired fallen empire. And absolutely love his friendship set to music. That should confuse them. Uh, do we actually know where they are? Yeah, there we are. We found them. And unfortunately, they've decided to lock us out. So fortunately, we decided not to get involved. Yeah, just don't get involved, to be honest. Just like, you know... Stay close by to them. Maybe don't actively go and try and visit Central Processing. Because Central Processing, if I recall correctly, is basically a black hole surrounded by spiralling debris. <laughs> it's all gone a bit wrong. These are malfunctioning ancient guardians. Marvellous. Research for research. Very, very gladly indeed. Thank you. Have actually made it here first. I have made it here first. And I don't have the influence just yet. But I should do momentarily. If you just open your gates to us. Okay, they've changed colour. They're no longer so waspy. I greatly approve. 
And that there is research complete, colony development speed up, good. And I'll take improved deflectors, I could just do with anything that's going to give me an edge in the upcoming war. And traditions as well. Now do I want shipyard build speed and building build speed up 15% or do I want energy grid unity? I'd like the unity, but I'm not really in a position to be building the energy grid yet, so... I will take the shipyard build speed, please. Thank you very much indeed. Keep working on prosperity. Okay, slightly concerning development here. My actual influence is falling to a crawl because my guys aren't happy with me right now. Ah, yes, of course, the free movement group. Um, we can fix that for you, actually. I'm happy to fix that for you. Policies need X. Uh, what do we need to change? Aha, we can do it. Resettlement needs to be prohibited. They will like that. So resettlement has been banned. Get time ticking along here. And that gets me up to perfect, 1.1. So that gets my total influence gain up to 3.9, spot on. What could I do for you bastards that would cheer you up? You want to find new contacts. If I just keep slowly, one by one, meeting new people, you'll be good. Also, diplomacy traditions. I can't waste an actual tradition just on making you happy for the time being. I'm very sorry, but I will try and do that as soon as possible. Okay, we got reinforcements piling in from Lux. We got pirates as well, hang on. In Figazar. Where is Figazar? Because we've only got so many actual areas that border me. Hang on, where the heck is Figazar? Figazar is. Oh, of course, Figazar. Right, okay. That's fine. Don't panic. The pirates must be dealt with, of course. Uh, yeah, this is why you don't want to leave areas surrounded by your borders and just expand out to whatever looks good. It's because that's just pirate bloody central. Right, um, deploy the fleet. Deploy the fleet along here. Hopefully, they're heading towards Bafrak, not actually towards Chibla or Porobim, because those would be slower to get to. Ah, and perfect indeed. They are indeed right there, albeit they've got they've got strength 481. 481. They're actually they're significantly better than me. I'm not quite sure how that strength has been calculated. Their actual layout seems to be about the same. Maybe they've just got more basic hull points. I'm genuinely not sure. Right. Get over here. Those guys are gonna be attacking this sooner rather than later. I've got more ships than them, and they don't warp out. So I guess we've just got to kind of hope we get there in time. <laughs> as well as, yeah, just, just keep piling on the reinforcements. Pile on the flipping reinforcements. We don't even have enough ships to hold off pirates right now, so flipping fanatical cabbages decide to invade. I've no idea what we're planning to bloody do. Right, I'm just moving straight in, and this fight is happening next to... Ah! It's happening next to the, uh, the neutron star. So as a result, sublight speed has been reduced. So these guys are moving quite on the slowly side. How's my station looking? Because I'd like my station to stay alive so it can provide, uh, yeah, reinforcing fire. Which would be nice. I'm having this fight dangerously close to a star, by the way. Uh, but alright, fine. Let's just have this dangerously close to a star. And my station keeps firing and providing backup fire. Move the camera up here. And hopefully, yeah, this actually works pretty nicely. We're losing strength, but they're losing strength pretty fast too. Because the station is providing, yeah, backup to us. And are any of my ships naffing off, by the way? Yeah, one ship has warped out. I'm kind of hoping this ship's going to warp out too. <laughs> it's kind of hard to see what's going on right now because the warping out. Yeah, that warped out. Good, we haven't lost a ship yet. Please warp out. Warp out, don't be. Now we've lost one ship. Two were able to retreat. These guys are still fighting. An asteroid has collided with something else, but like in the good way. And these guys are now falling apart fast if we can just wipe out this guy. Come on, warp out! Oh, you just made it out in the nick of time with literally one hull point. <laughs> well done. Uh, and at this point, we're still taking some bad damage here. You should really warp out as well. No, we lost one. So we have lost two ships. Uh, but other than that, actually, things going pretty well here. And now just finish off the last guy. I think everyone else still has some armor. Alright, very good indeed. Uh, so those guys have been cleared out, and my strength right now is 216, and shields are recovering. Do I dare move straight onto the pirate base? I'm going to give it a poke at least. I think I might be able to actually just take out the pirate base right now, because my shields regenerate by the time I get there. And also I've got reinforcements piling in. I've got uh, classes 1 and classes 2 just piling in as well. Ah, unfortunately, I think we're going to see one of the downsides of the new reinforced system. 
Uh, the reinforcing AI in terms of pathfinding is sometimes a bit dumb. So this ship here is just trying to join up to us to reinforce. But it's probably going to skirt close enough to this base to get drawn into a fight so that it will probably lose. Or is it going to be clever enough to avoid it? No, it's just avoided it, but I've definitely seen reinforcing fleets before get pulled into stupid fights that they shouldn't actually have been involved with. And yeah, with the reinforcements piling in as well, this is definitely plenty enough time for us to basically just get in here and knacker this here station before it generates any more pirates. Good. And this is why you want a nice tidy empire with no loose empty systems around the outside. Because right now, actually, my empire in its current form, once I've cleared out this and actually taken this system, literally pirates can only arrive from one direction. And that's from Talisus. That's literally the only place pirates can come from, because pirates can only come from uh, open areas of space that nobody owns, because they spawn in there with bases, and then those bases generate pirates. So my empire is kind of accidentally very, very good at suppressing pirates, which is lovely. So the pirate base has gone. Do we lose anything? I think we're okay. This fleet should probably return home for healing, and really I should probably build a new shipyard down. In fact, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to actually move my fleet instead back over here. And I'm going to set up a new shipyard over here. I'm going to upgrade this to an actual starport. Uh, so as a result, it's going to be a proper base where I can actually have a shipyard. And I can actually train and repair my ships right here. And we've got Coil Gun 2 as well. Marvellous. Some upgrades are starting to come in. Ooh, here's a new one. Corvette Hull Points plus 100. This is a new fun little upgrade. Yeah, definitely going to be wanting that. Very, very useful indeed. And with adaptive bureaucracy done, the gene System clinic becomes available. Complete. This one I like. I like the gene clinic. Gene clinic is, I think, plus two social research and also plus one unity. So basically, oh, and it causes growth rate plus 10%, which is really cool. So I like basically slapping down a gene clinic very early on in a new planet's development. That's always a good idea to my mind. We've encountered something new, by the way. Is this an actual empire? It is. Avian class. Okay. So there's some avians somewhere around here that we might also be doing a bit of a race to get hold of. Yes, that could be that could be a problem if they want to eat this territory too because, oh, that's a nice system. That's a nice system. That's an okay system. There's a lot of good stuff around here I'd like to get my hands on if I could. But I suspect these guys are going to be dicks about it. And the problem is there's not a great choke point to hold. If I could have got to this system before they did, this would have been great. Because then I could basically have had all of this and they wouldn't have been able to get to it. But now they've got an open door to it and I need to keep expanding out this way to make sure they don't close me off. Because if they take this one system, I can't get any further. If they take this system, I'm going to need to go a long way around to get to anything. So tactically blocking people off can definitely work. In fact, I'm actually going to get my social guys on the new aliens as I know that's an actual proper alien species. That's probably a good idea. Orbital research mandate is also the current mandate. That's fine. I'm building two... Yeah, I'm building the two platforms right here, which is going to be really, really good. I need to get one of my science ships. Where are my cocking science ships? One of them's way up there. One of you's way down here. Okay. I'm just going to have to build another science ship. Uh, that's just going to have to be a thing I do, because I want to get this research done. This debris is useful. And also, I can send him over in this direction to see if maybe it's something I'd be interested in trying to expand into in the future. Oh, no, we didn't need to bother. Those guys have actually managed to contact us. Good, that's free influence. So, spiritual seekers. Oh, I like them. I like them already. Egalitarian spiritualist. They're slightly terrifying, ugly, beard bird people. Oh, wait, sorry, the microphone's on. Uh-oh. Right, it's fine. Hello! Um, We're going to say the exact things you are. We're going to say, may spirits bring you to your goals. Uh, I almost read that as may the spirits bring you to your goats, which would also be good if you have goats and you want to find them. So they're over here somewhere. What do we know about them? They like us all right. That's good. Their fleet power is superior to us. Unsurprising, to be honest. I haven't even used up my base 21 yet. And they've got relationships with a couple of people, including they've blocked out a couple of people. So there's a couple of people somewhere they don't like, but they are pleasingly a good distance away from me. So hopefully it doesn't involve me. And that there, by the way, is a wormhole. Obviously wormholes come in pairs now. Uh, so there'll be a matching wormhole somewhere else uh, in the galaxy. Don't know where. It could be like right on the other side of the galaxy. Way, way, way over somewhere else. Uh, but you can't open them or explore them until you've taken wormhole stabilization tech. Which is quite a long way away. I've not seen it show up yet in any of the games I've played. 
And there's those improved deflectors. Very, very nice indeed. And, ah, here we go. Sensors. Improved sensors. So the way sensors work, I don't know if I've explained this already. Uh, basically, yeah, by default, sensors, you can only sense what's actually in the same system as you. Once you get up to sensors, the kind of the next level up, you can sense what's in your system and also down one hyperlane. Once you get up to the next level, it's down two hyperlanes and then three. So physical distance, the green ring that used to exist in Stellaris, just isn't a thing anymore. Now it's simply how many systems away you're able to see. There's also an ascendancy perk that gives you, along with something else, um, sensor range plus two as well. So at that point, you start being able to see very, very far away. Like if I had a single ship down in the south of my empire, I'd basically be able to see the entirety of these fanatical purifiers. And speaking of them, they are expanding irritatingly. Ah, and that station is done, by the way. So I upgraded the star base to an actual proper little starport thing. So now it counts towards the limit. Two out of five. One in Lux, one over here as well. That's what that little symbol is. So now that that's here, I get to actually choose what I want to build there. So obviously, very soon I want to build a shipyard. Also an anchorage for a little bit more naval capacity. Because yeah, buildings and technology now have a much bigger impact on your fleet capacity and your overall naval capacity compared to like POPs, for example. Now it seems to be much more tied to technology and buildings. Ah, the Rhino is offering to trade communications for communication. So I give him access to the people I've communicated with and he gives me, yeah, the people he's communicated with. Now I've just seen from his screen he's communicated with somebody I don't know yet. So this should open up. Yes, indeed. Someone new. The Pelismus Assembly. Hello, who are you exactly? You are slaving despots who are also cactuses with teeth. Okay, you guys are not giving plants a good name. In general, what I'm learning here is plants are dicks. I'm going to tell the slaving despots that love his friendship set to music as well. Marvellous. Also, this amuses me. The current leader of the Fanatical Purifiers is apparently a substance abuser who has fallen to substance abuse to cope with the stress. Uh, so I suppose that raises the question, what substance? I mean, logically, do plants, like, grind up humans into little bits and then smoke them? Would that be a thing? And for the moment, I'm absolutely swimming in influence because every time I meet an alien for a certain period of time, yeah, the Alien Awareness Trust just flipping love me, and their influence goes up to plus 1.2, which is marvellous, even if the people I meet are a bunch of utter slaving dicks. Now, one thing I should get down, by the way, is as I'm a little bit lacking in good quality worlds right now, I may as well just found the ones I do actually have because I need minerals. This world's got minerals on it. So I should quickly save up for a colony ship from Lux. And as this world is all about the minerals, I should probably send humans rather than tabbies for the first trip over. OK, the star base down here at our outpost is now completed. And now that it's actually got a shipyard attached, these ships can basically just have repairs here, which is very, very convenient indeed. So those guys are healing up right now. I'm also going to slap down an anchorage here to actually get my overall naval capacity up a tiny bit. Because, yeah, it feels like these guys don't have a massive navy. Their fleet power is superior at the minute, at least. And they are throwing down a lot of defense. But the defense they're throwing down is actually in the south, which is interesting. Now, by any chance... If I were to just do a fate declare war again. Okay, the rhinos are on board. The rhinos are actually on board. These guys, however, yeah, they still say their forces aren't sufficiently built up, unfortunately. But the rhinos would be up for it. How's your strength? Well, your fleet power is superior to us. So I feel like you really should be willing to move in, but whatever, eh? Ah, and we do indeed have a lovely, lovely observation post down on these guys who are still in the Iron Age. So, no chance of them nuking each other imminently, which is very, very good indeed. And what we want to do is, for the moment at least, let's just passively observe them. There's no need to rush to actually enlightening them or anything. But yeah, if we were to actually enlighten them technologically, it would cost a lot of energy. It would cost a lot of social stuff. It would take a long time to do because they're only in the Iron Age right now. Let's wait until we're on a bit of a more secure footing. For the moment at least, let's just passively observe them because that gets me conveniently eight society research every month. And that's basically just doubled my society research, which is very, very useful indeed. Now, I also need to redesign my ships because right now we are using, yes, very much outdated technology. Okay, shove coil guns everywhere as coil guns are the only thing we've got at class 2. We do have the fusion reactor for more power if we need more power. We don't have any bonuses here yet, but yeah, we've got the reactor booster. 
if we need that. That costs five, as opposed to that also, the difference is only five. So there's no point going down to a lower reactor and using the reactor boost. That's just for emergencies. But what I do have is, uh, yeah, upgraded shielding. Now, obviously, people explain to me in the comments, which is, I feel just quite frankly stupid for not realising. Yeah, shields, obviously, and or rather equivalent level shields and armour provide the same number of additional hit points in the form of either armour points or shield points, but... Armor doesn't need power, whereas shield does need power, but shields regenerate and armor don't. As well, of course, as the fact that you want to optimize your loadout depending on what you're going up against. So if you know you're going up against enemies that have extremely high quality, say, laser weapons, you might want to have more shields and less armor, for example. Wait, is that the way around that's supposed to go? Yeah, I got it right. More shield and less armor if you want to actually uh, try and counter lasers. Marvelous. And the orbital researcher mandate is fulfilled for another pile of that. And that actually ticks us over into the next tradition. Marvellous. Now, fleet logistics. Ship upkeep reduced by 10%. That would be nice to have. Alternatively, building upkeep and starbase upkeep reduced by 10%. And survey has been completed. Marvellous. I think we've actually just managed to survey enough inhabitable worlds. Very, very good indeed. Well done, science. And the other one, yeah, Energy Grid and Energy Nexus. Normally I rush that one, but right now I'm not in a position to be building those. So, which one actually is costing me more right now? So, building a star base represents an energy cost of about... What is that? That's about like 22 or something. Ship is only 15. So, yeah, better to actually go for building a star base upkeep reduction. There we go. That saved me a whole two energy. Beautiful. And the colony ship is ready, let's slap it down. And this world shall be known as Human Mining Colony 01, because we don't actually put as much effort into naming these things when it's only the humans going there. And we found an artifact that's kicked off a little chain of events. Marvellous. So we've recovered artifacts from an ancient alien civilization on uh, Puo 4. That must have been active in this region of space possibly 12 million years ago, judging by the age of the artifacts. From what we've been able to piece together, our scientists theorised these aliens who called themselves uh, the Voltorum Star Assembly were worm-like annelids, roughly three to four metres in length, communicated with each other primarily through vibrations carried through their segmented bodies. Begins the precursors, the Voltorum event chain. So we may or may not visit that over time. But yeah, we've got problems here. These guys are just Upgrading. expanding like crazy. Like, in a perfect world, we'd have been able to basically compress these guys in. Also, why has nobody gone for either of... What's located in these two areas? Why am I worried there's something bad in these areas? Because <laughs> nobody wants to go into them, and it concerns me a little bit. We need to go to war against these guys, because if they just keep spreading, and now they've just got open space next to them, they could just spread and spread and spread and cause a lot of trouble, and they are up to... Yeah, at this point, they are up to three systems and growing. Their fleet power is superior... Okay, the fleet power is superior, but I've got friends. And if you guys would like to join in, that'd be great. Come on, please be willing to join in. Okay, how good are you guys, however? How good are you? You guys are... You've got superior fleet power. Okay, this could all work out, in theory. The important thing in this war is, I don't necessarily want any of these worlds, though, actually... If I could just have one of these worlds, if I could just have, say, this world on the end that's going to be small and fairly easy to subjugate, I could have, if I could just turn these people around and make them into my friends, I could have desert-faring people. And what do we say about over here? What's that? Two really good desert worlds? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. That could be just the flipping thing. I think we've got a plan here. If we declare war on these guys, all we need to do is uh, take hold of all of this. If we were able to take hold of all of this, that would just be absolutely marvellous. And while we're doing that, these guys coming from this side, they'll actually be the ones running into the stations and the defences and hopefully the fleets. Because we can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these fleets right now, not yet anyway. But if I was just to dedicate a little bit more time to building up the cabbage defence fleet maybe we would be able to. I'm not 100% sure. But bear in mind, in Solaris 2.0, wars aren't really a massive win and massive loser affair. They can just be small gains. Very, very small gains indeed. And in fact, maybe, as a starting point, I say, screw this down here, but if I was able to take just these four systems, that might be okay. 
take those four systems right there, and including, yeah, this planet right here, and then basically call a status quo, that could work very nicely. Because then, I've got access to this bit of the world, these guys have been officially contained, and it is a war of containment, so that feels appropriate, I'm supposed to be trying to contain them. All I need to do is break free. My first objective should be taking these two systems, then I've just got a way out. My secondary objective, if I can actually push that far, is to knock over this world. Because if I can actually knock over this world, then as a direct result of that, I actually have Desity people in my empire. Which would be very, very good. And then the process of re-education begins. To turn them from actual xenophobic purifiers into lovely, huggy, but also still a little bit spiritualist egalitarian sorts. Which sounds like quite a conversion, but I'm sure we'll be able to make it work somehow. But you know, ladies and gentlemen, I'd say that's enough for now. We have learnt a lot about the shape of the galaxy around us. We've managed to make some friends, and I'd say potentially we have actually got a plan for a war here. But I'm glad I got to show off kind of how the new board system works and why I think it's actually quite a good, entertaining little system. Because, yeah, it is in fact quite fun to... Ooh, there's a system over there with three planets. Three planetary systems. Ooh. Okay. Including, ooh, one of each sort. An ice world, a desert world, and they're all pretty good. They're all pretty good. I wouldn't mind having that, you know. I wouldn't mind. Maybe don't focus on that for now, but three planets for the price of one is kind of hilarious. We might actually have to go and have a look at that, though I suspect these guys... Actually, no. These guys don't have an obvious way to get at it. They need to go bum, 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 bum. They're four systems away. Bum, 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 bum. I'm four systems away. Albeit, if I decided to actually go around those four systems, I'd leave myself massively exposed to pirates. So exposed. Though, if I was to take this system as well... You know what? Never mind. We'll discuss that next time, ladies and gentlemen. I love this game. I absolutely adore this game. We'll discuss that next time. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Stellaris Apocalypse. Thank you very much, and goodbye. I've created a small problem in my road system, which is uh, it's literally impossible for anyone to ever go back into town. And this building shall be where we produce our zebras. And this much taller building next door is naturally where we produce the giraffes. Does anyone remember how the road system went? I think it was something like this.